Jim, uh, welcome to the show. How are you? Uh, where are you? Where are you calling us in uh, today? Awesome. 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 I am in um, Oklahoma yeah, City. Yeah, quite so... well. Thanks for having me. I'm in Denver, not, Colorado. Not, in my, not in that my home, far away. In my dining room. I've been you looking know. forward to having this conversation with you. So I've got, I've got um, a few things we want Great. to jump in. So let me start by yeah. what a lot of us are hearing in the news right now. And, you know, you and the folks at Ring Central are at the center of this. So the head of um, Tata, the, one of the largest consultancy in the world, the CEO comes out and says, you know, call centers are going to be dead uh, due to AI, like it's over. But mm. if you don't believe his opinion, you've got Wall Street. And if you look at stocks of, you know, you know, BPOs, especially outsourcing companies, yeah. they are down 60, 70 percent. So it seems like Wall Street things ah, maybe this, you know, call center people and call centers things might be might be in trouble. Then I read your report, uh, and and it says, you know, forty-one to fifty-one percent of interactions no longer need a mm -hmm. human. As someone who started my career in the '90s, putting on that headset, are you telling me that human-based uh, service is dead? Is this is this what I should take away from this? No, no way. Uh, I, I don't see human-based service going away at, at any point. Uh, AI is really great, you know, and I, it, it's, it, I think about it from a macro level and I could see why some people who've never worked in a mm. call center or, or aren't, you know, boots on the ground, they might think that, <laughs> oh, it's just going to replace everything. But right. I, I talk to contact center leaders all the time and none of them are feeling like, oh yeah, we're super adequately staffed. We have all the right amount of people. It's super easy to like make sure our agents know right. how to do X, Y, Z. Mm. Um, no big deal. Right. What this does is it doesn't replace any of those agents. Like they need augmentation it, it is what companies really need. And that whole, the whole idea that AI is just going to replace them is just completely mythical. What I see is that humans have much more empathy. They understand nuance. Uh, you also have a lot of different AI type things that are, they have to communicate with all these different databases that can still cause confusion. Um, it, it can be very difficult, but we see AI being much more complementary just to the agent themselves. Right. I think about, uh, Gosh, when I I started my career, same same as you, right? In a call center in college, just answering questions, right? And helping people out. There's no way an AI could have you know thought as creatively as I needed to as, as a person. Um, but at the same time, I would run into issues where I like didn't know certain things. There was basic stuff I needed help with. Or you get people calling in asking you stuff that is just like, why do I have to answer this question? <laughs> you know, this is so easy. So AI is really helpful deflecting right. certain things that are bad, but also surfacing knowledge when I need it. So Jim, this uh, is would have refreshing been because you know, when I was you know, I, actually have this kind of stuff, it wouldn't have replaced me. Technology really made me happier. Are uh, and that would be nice. generally in the front of driving this in the wrong way at times, meaning when all the conversation is buy this thing, let's get rid of the human. You know, and yeah. no one pauses and thinks about, well, how about we use this to help the human and the whole automate hmm. first, right? Ask questions later <laughs> mentality is is something that's refreshing to see you take the other side of that. So let's assume, and I and by the way, I agree with you that yeah. humans will always be part of the equation. How exactly do we use this new tool we have to, uh, to use your word, to augment, to help that service employee? Oh, boy. I mean, I think we've really only scratched the surface. You know, companies like right. Ring Central who are sort of leading the charge in this, there's still just so much we can do. I think about uh, just another example of surfacing information, right? I, I remember we, we deployed a contact center a while back, and they were having a lot of challenges where they were having to try and bring people back out of retirement because they just didn't have, there's so much institutional knowledge that it sort of walked off the job. Right. They'd gotten busier. They didn't know how to get that knowledge in people's minds. And that's something we face every day, whether you're in a contact center uh, in any role, right? You have someone who knows a lot of stuff and they leave. Sometimes that panic sets in. You're like, oh no, how do I get this whole person's brain, you know, just right here and, and have everybody else access it? That's, it's impossible. Oh yeah. You're, so that's, you're that's searching, you're right asking your friends next about, door, I guess I was we're agent, virtual now. Like looking over like, like, hey, does, has anyone you, know, you, you get a question from someone you just don't know the answer? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I did that all the time. Like, you put on me, you're like, oh, hang on a second. You put on me, you're like, hey, did, does anybody know? You know, the, and right. it's like, if they don't know, what do you do? You either search online, you try and figure it out. Maybe worst case scenario, you lie, which is not good. You don't want your agent doing that. Uh, but, or, you know, you punt them into a different call queue and just wash your hands. And now they're angry, right? And now the next agent that gets it, they've got an angry person. Like it, it, it's the worst, right? So having that knowledge just to say, hey, this person's asking about XYZ. I, I, I love this. I don't know if you've seen this meme, whatever going that. around that says like, say to possibly solve I thought issue, that right? AI that's was a, going to really help do the dishes you know? so I can write the poetry and do the painting. <laughs> it, it's what you're saying, right? It's like, I fundamentally struggle with this point of view that says the thing we want to really automate is the conversation yeah. point. You and I had that job. It was not the talking to customer part that was the difficult part, it was the finding information. Yeah. Uh, it was the navigating the system. It was the, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. like, why are we not? So I, I love that, that area of knowledge as a place that um, you can start. W- where else are you seeing this really impact yeah. that internal service age? Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Uh, QA. They uh, white jack, one. they put so, the fit in. Do you remember doing it, and you know, we had perfect a behavior? Q&A like. days when I was an agent, right? <laughs> Where your your boss sits behind you and they like Yep. Yep. But... <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like uh <laughs> yeah. it's not a good sample set, right? It's boring, it's time consuming the for the supervisors. I'm sitting there, I'm like, Jesus, like this person just over my shit is weird, right? And you're like, you're trying your best and they're doing scorecards and then from that, they're going to derive some value, allegedly, yeah. right? And make sure you're in conformity. Yeah. Um, I also see contact centers doing this where they employ people and they're like full-time full time <laughs> folks and they just listen to recordings, you know, on like 2X speed. Or worst case scenario, your supervisor is doing it after hours and they're ignoring their families or whatever. It's like, oh, I got to fill out these QA scorecards. That's terrible, right? It's bad for the agents, bad for the supervisors. You don't really get good data from that. So AI is a really great way to automate that because yeah. A, it removes bias, right? Like I might have some beef with my with my supervisor because I it was taking too long at the microwave yesterday or my lunch break or whatever. Right. And now they're like going to be more strict with me. AI removes a lot of that, which is cool. It can actually just do the QA for you, give you better insights, save you some time. And then, you know, me as an agent, I get something that's actually actionable that, you know, a supervisor can listen to and say, Hey, like here was the feedback the AI gave. I agree. Here you go. Uh, and I say, Oh, awesome. You know, in an automated way. So just saving everybody time, giving you some of these more you thorough, know, I- I you don't have to have back a time so that we can sit behind you. So you know, that's really nice. Over focus well. on uh, the I really mean, large yeah, really enterprises, cool right? Your giant airlines, your telco companies. Um, how does the more smaller, median company mm-hmm. benefit from from what is now available from folks like you guys at Ring Central and and others? Yeah. Oh, I mean, they get economies of scale, right? We see, I mean, even in the, the research that we saw, like, you know, 40% of companies see, you know, AI really shortening time, shortening call times, you know, increasing your first contact resolution, things like that, which is huge. If you're a smaller company, you're trying to compete, but you also want to give people really good personalized service, AI can help you do that and, and almost give you the perception of being a much larger, much, you know, more well-resourced organization and and make you more competitive, which I think is really really important. It's a it's a competitive market. Customer service is going to set it's going to help companies set themselves apart, and this is a really great <laughs> right. area where they can do that if they deploy right. it well. Because I also see, you know, some companies just want to deploy like a point solution to try and deflect things, almost to their detriment. Right? I mean, gosh, my internet went out just the other day, <laughs> and I found myself even even on the consumer side right. being so worked up. Because I started with their chatbot because that was what they wanted me to do. And then I, I argue with the chatbot for, you know, for like 10 minutes. Finally, it escalates me to a person and I'm chatting with him. He has no idea. What, he's like, I don't know. I, like, I didn't see what you were doing with the chatbot. So I'm chatting with him. It doesn't quite work out. I get escalated to a phone call. And then I talk to a woman. She also had none of the context. So I got to explain my problem three separate times, which is just had me all worked up. So by the time I get to this, this very sweet woman, I'm, I'm like... I'm angry. I'm all hot under the collar. And she's like, oh, I'm like, so sorry. Now, now she's apologizing for something that isn't even her fault. It was a technological, you know, miscue for them having different point solutions that do not talk with one I, another. I, I'm with uh, you. Just I, to, I, 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 maybe think we can deflect some stuff. If I am on a crusade. Right, maybe, but like, 
if you have the it's, right it's, approach, you can actually make a difference. You know, um, you got to stop thinking the only tool in the tool belt is let me automate this, let me deflect it, let me. You know, I was reading something. Um, gosh, it's been a few months back. That was fascinating. They did a study around mm-hmm. sending of e cards. You know, like someone has a birthday or whatever, and send an e card, and they surveyed the people and the person sending the e-card and the person receiving the e-card got nothing Mm -hmm. emotionally from the interaction. Yeah. But, but it's very efficient. Click a few buttons while you go. But if you go to your local store and you Mm -hmm. agonize for hours, like it matters to pick the perfect card. Yeah. Like, Oh, this one is oh they, you know, and then you sign it and then you put it in an envelope and you mail it. And for those listening under, uh, 30 uh-huh. that is a stand it's a snail mail you put a stamp on it you put in there it gets there a few days but like then they surveyed and the person who receives it gets a huge emotional boost and the person who sends it gets an even bigger boost than the person receiving it so that's an example of like yes you can automate this and click a few yeah. button but what are you missing so like the whole automate just for automation's sake is one of the things I'm like, this tool can do much more than, right? Like deflecting, deflecting. That's why I want to talk to you to ex- expand the aperture of people. Like, yes, you can do a bot that can resolve things and you can do an IVR, but there is a lot more. There's a lot more out there. Yeah. I mean, if you're based on, I think that Evite thing is a good example where all of a sudden when you take that sentimentality out of it, it just becomes an exchange of information. And then what's the point, right? Like, I can just send a calendar invite yeah. to people and it's the same thing. It's just an exchange of information because we've removed empathy, effort, sentimentality. And now I'm just like, I don't know, here's when it is. Here's when the party is. Um, but then you add something like, hey, I'm talking to a person. They're like, oh, hey, Jim, glad to talk to you today. Like, right. that must be pretty frustrating. Let me sort this out for you. I'm like, oh, great. Like, they're going to fix my problem. Because um, you can just maintain a search engine if you want to. If it's all about just exchange of information, just like, have a good database on your website and like put a little search engine on there and put a bunch of knowledge articles, bam, done. But that is not the point of, of customer interactions, no. right? Like the point is to create connection uh, and a person creates connection. I'm not, I don't feel connected to a bot yeah. in um, any way. And Sometimes uh, it's nice just I don't know if, it, if it's really great and solves my um, problem quickly or whatever. But from Ring Central, uh, in general, so I'm going to throw you a curveball here. Um, I'm going to ask you, what purchase under fifty dollars impacted your your life the most in a negative or a positive way? And while you're thinking about yours, I'll tell you mine. Give you buy you some time. Uh, mine is the neti pot. Um, I have allergies, so you go to this yeah. thing, and when things get really bad, there's you know, it comes in one of these boxes. You see this woman pouring this thing in one nostril and just <laughs> flow and flow. When I do it, it's like I'm getting waterboarded, but it is fantastic. Clears my allergies, things like 20 bucks. It's the most, it's not even tech, you know, it's the most, it's the most consequential uh-huh. under $50. I just found the thing a few years ago and it's, it's a lifesaver. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What would be yours? Really weird. Awesome. Mine is definitely, I, I play the electric guitar. I play a lot of instruments, but I, I got two little kids. The only time I get to like play is really when they're asleep, but it just got a little too loud. But then I wanted to still have, I don't want to just play my electric guitar acoustically. So I found a, a very fun little pedal from a company. I think it's, it's 50 bucks, like just from, uh, from a really great company that I can plug in headphones and I can still use my pedal board and I still very much get that like amplifier experience, but That's- I can listen to it through my headphones <laughs> and be quiet. Are so you I still wake up? Are you still animated children. though? Even uh, though that's, it, that's you are, you are still. Also, you know, <laughs> you don't irritate people in the house. If like that. Awesome. Um, so I want to oh, ask you. Yeah, I, I've got a know, lot of. If I think about so this, space, it, it doesn't stop. Even yeah, you know, even this whole quietly. Yeah. customer experience technology, CCAS, UCAS, what what have you. You know, if you look at yeah. all the brands and all the people you compete with. It can start to blend together, right? It can start to all feel like everyone's sort of saying the same thing. Um, so as you think about your point of view, how you sort of see the world, um, what is different in, in what you're saying and what you're building yeah. compared to the rest of the marketplace? Yeah, it's it's very true. And it's, it was funny long ago, 
I've yeah. been I've been working in AI for a long time, and it was funny when when OpenAI really went public. I was like, we're going to see a hundred different <laughs> companies pop up and just partner with AI, just like do something. Um, and sure enough, right? You go to trade shows, conferences, and I'm like, where do these people come from? Like, where are these companies coming from? But then you, you you dig in, you're like, okay, yeah, what they're saying is great. Hey, we can do X, Y, Z. And and nine times out of 10, that's actually true. But some of the problems that you see is even when you're using any any kind of open source, something other, depending on how it's architected, if you don't own a lot of your own stack, you wind up using partnerships that might have very material rate limits. Like, oh, you can only do, I don't even know what they would be, but you know, a thousand API calls per minute or something like that. For actual like scalable technology, like Ring Central. It's not going to cut it because we've got millions and millions of interactions going through the system at any given moment. So you have to have something that scales well, uh, that isn't going to cost a lot because the compute power is so enormous. So that's why we've invested so much in in owning our own you know, large language models and to our own AI stack, our own rags, right. things like that, just to make sure that that scale is there and the accessibility is there without just passing on a massive expense to the customers or just eating that expense on our on our side, like. It has to make sense. What it can do is really, really cool, but it has to be built to stand the test no, of time. I, and be I, economical. I, I think that's. Time. I think that's, that's important. Really I think critical to me. So you know, that's something we've invested a lot. You know, I've in. talked it's to really, really to, to practitioners and people in the space who are buying the same thing, tw- thing, things twice, and they don't know it, right? So you're already in OpenAI Azure shop, and you just bought this other thing that's just a wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> right like like at some point you've got to look under the hood um and do your due yeah. diligence and going yeah this thing is yeah. fantastic the sizzle is great how's the steak that how does it really yeah. uh, how does it really hold up where 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 it matters uh you're talking to a guy who abandoned a mm-hmm. hundred thousand calls when i used to be in the flower business at valentine's day right yeah. you know so like because you know, we had an on-prem system back then and the, the whole thing just busied out, right? We didn't have enough, uh-huh. <laughs> we didn't have, have enough capacity. Same thing is true here in this world. Like, what if this thing you build is uber mm-hmm. successful? You know, are you building this thing on a on a platform that one, you don't get a bill, a nasty, nasty bill at the end of that deal? And, and two, it actually holds up and doesn't disappoint your customers. Yeah. And I think that you bring up a good point, even with just the level of effort, uh, like, yeah, the capacity being one big thing. I always laugh. You know, on-prem things always make me laugh a little bit. Like even back in the day when right. everything was just migrating from, you know, on-prem PBX to the, to the cloud and the same goes for contact center. It, it's funny when you talk to folks who are like, oh, it's fine. Like it's, it's good enough, right? It's working. It's okay. But anything on-prem, as you've experienced, when it fails, it fails hard. You know, you, you know, it isn't like no, it a just, little glitch where it's it like, just, oh. Like customers, oh, I don't know. Like, my, literally, my tail light is out. I can still and drive. Say, we do like, not want to talk. Not like that at all. Like, busy like, out the. Like, it was. It was the worst day of my <laughs> of my of my career. Like I'm literally like, what is going on? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But it it's reinforced in me that oh, just white knuckles yes, this thing just works, like oh but will no. the lights be on yeah. is it is it on a solid foundation I, I do want to go back so funny. before we run out of time to the something else you also said that's different you know i talked to a lot of people in this space yeah this focus on the internal employee i have a bias i have a passion for contact mm-hmm. center representatives and all of that that's where i came from um you know We've been trying to fix this job for a long time. You yeah. know, people go into this job and they mean well, they want to serve, they want to get there. And they're young, usually young people like yeah. you and I uh, back in the day. And then you get to your work and you put your iPhone down and you and you log into a blue screen and you're like, what have I done? Uh, mm-hmm. This is 1985. Yep. Uh, and then you want to quit, but you love but you love the work you're doing. What are you hearing? And give me some hope on how technology yep. like yours can finally get us to a place where this is a much better job for folks. Yeah, I think eliminating some of the minutia is a big yeah. one for me where, you know, we yeah. hear that from employees like we saw it even in the in the research, right? Like it was like 51 or 52% of agents are just like feeling burnout, right? And the thing that always made me feel that way was the minutia. I mean, dispositioning calls, 
writing notes, uh, summarizing my conversation just to make you know good record keeping. Um, and that was a really big thing that, that bugged me. And that's an area where we'll help a ton, even just doing automated dispositioning, uh, doing all the summarization and note taking on behalf of the agent, keeping them in Zendesk or wherever they're at Salesforce, doesn't matter, wherever they're at. Uh, it'll just do it automatically in the record. So it'll just append it. And they can just sort of get back to their lives, right? Like no one likes the boring stuff. It's like grading papers, you know? Wouldn't it be great? You know, no teacher likes to sit there and grade papers. Got, It'd be cool I've if you just automate it. Like, that's one of the cool things. The first one I want to ask you is, is really great. Give me I love, I love uh, that. your I view of the future. For that back the so let's say I'm listening to this and I'm like, I go, yeah, that makes sense. And I go build this. Describe to me what that new. Yeah. Start from the customer who calls in um, or, you know, interacts in some way. How does that change? You told a story earlier about you going from a chat, yeah. a chat bot to this. If that company had done what we just talked about today, what does the future look like for the customer and then the agent? Yeah, I think they've got to, like, obviously I want, I don't know, maybe you have customer service hours I, that, you know, aren't, don't work for my schedule. That's fine. But it's like they need 24 mm. seven access, right? So that's going to be a big thing for me as a consumer. And that's where AI can help. It can help automate a lot of that stuff. Um, also, then you got to think about how your customers are communicating, how they want to communicate. Is it, mm. is it by SMS? Is it in Facebook? Is it in chat? Well, whatever, right? And then, so make sure you have those. And then how do we preserve context throughout in a fully integrated ecosystem? Because then, you know, seen it good, seen it done well, seen it done poorly. Um, we talked about it being done poorly earlier. I've also seen it been great. Chatbot isn't working. It gets escalated. The person, hey, I see you're having a hard time with XYZ. Let me go ahead and just dive into this. I'm like, okay, great. Uh, and that's really impressive and, and, and good. So, uh, that's, that's really, to me is the future is an integrated, you know, single, single solution. If you're just, you know, bolting on a chat bot, right. it is not great. You know, just don't, please don't do that. You know, have the courage to be like, Hey, we might have to rip Makes out sense. a bunch of stuff. Uh, to what about something the agent? that's like built to stand the test of time. It'll be worth it in the long run. Uh, just to have a fully integrated comprehensive solution. Amen. Oh, agents. I, right. I think their lives can be a lot better. I'd like to see a world where, Agents are going to stick around longer, where turnover will go down a lot, where it becomes more of a career path, right? As opposed to this sort of, I don't know, we just need to plug up this assembly line of customer service agents where it's like, because it's more complicated than that. You know, you're not just plugging a steering wheel in or whatever. You're, you're doing a lot more. Um, so that's that's what I would like to see is them find more satisfaction in their jobs. See the contact center, even through those agents, become more of a more of a strategic arm, you know, and we can get that from taking the unstructured data around customer interactions, giving it structure and then, and then putting analytics against it and saying, Hey, you know, turns out our CSAT scores aren't actually bad because of our agents. It turns out it's because we have some real business process issues that our agents have just been correcting on the back end. Now let's look upstream, you know? So all of a sudden AI can turn them into something that's more strategic. Uh, that's, a critical wow. function that's actually I, I providing look valuable to the feedback day where upstream to strategic business. Contact so center say, hey, here's what thought change, of that way in that. Um, and gosh, it has so much problems. data and so much potential. I I I think we're headed in that future. I am I am now more optimistic. Last thing I would have you leave folks yeah. with is if you're listening to this, um, most mm -hmm. people haven't gotten started yet. Right. Like you can live in an echo chamber and think everyone has this AI powered contact centers. And that is that is not true. In fact, uh, most contact centers have on prem. That on prem situation mm -hmm. I, I mentioned is the norm. And the question I, I can hear people hearing it, uh, yeah. listening to this is, Jim, I am so far away uh -huh. from what you just described. Where do I start? I'm sure you get that a lot. Where do I just get started? Yeah. I mean, Crawl, walk, and run, yeah. right? You know, like don't bite off more than you can chew. If you're on something old and on-prem and you have these like big service contracts that a lot of folks do, right? I mean, just, just start there. Upgrade to something cloud-based that's more modern. You know, even an example, Ring CX just is an example, right? These more modern yeah. solutions. You could teach an intern to manage it <laughs> right. in like a day because it's just so much easier and you don't need those like, you know, certif engineers, certified technicians or whatever, right? Like, you don't need that anymore, you know? So right out of the gate, you're gonna have something more modern that has, you know, you won't run into those headroom issues, which is really, really important. And you'll just have something that's gonna, gonna be better, more flexible. So just start there even, you know? You'll save a lot of money, it'll be great. You look like a hero, you know, to your finance team. And then start adding on 
a few other awesome. little things. Jim, hey, this has been we're, fantastic. We're make, it's always good to meet another old uh, contact center guy from, from back like in the day. Um, this has been an awesome conversation. We're going to put Jim's uh, info for folks to go contact Jim if you have further questions. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. We hope you uh, come back and see us again soon. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. You've been listening to an Amos Talks production. Thank you.